create a new model. We're going to make it 36 by 36 with a thickness of 1 inch. I'm going to machine from the top of the block and set the zero at the top. Now we're going to use the geometric drawing tools inside of Express to kind of get ourselves going with the sign creation. The first thing we're going to make is the border. So I'm going to create a square that is 30 inches and I'm going to center it in the view. Once it's centered in the page, I'm going to go ahead and continue to create some more design vectors here. So I'm going to snap to the top left corner and I'm going to make a circle that is 7 in diameter. Now in order to adjust this so that I just have to do one quarter and use my mirror tool to create the others, I'm just going to create a couple reference lines and I'm going to snap them to the middle of the model. And then I'm going to use my trimming tools to trim out some of these areas around the border and then I can remove these extra reference lines. Once I've got these lines selected, I'm going to go ahead and use the mirror tool to mirror them to the right and then I'm going to mirror them to the bottom. Now one thing that you're going to notice is that these are all segmented up. So in order for me to use a toolpath to machine them out, I need to join them together. So if I select all of these vectors, I can then use the join with coincident starter endpoints to join these into one closed vector object move on and I'm going to import some vectors in for a banner. Now if you want to import vectors you can either use the import from vector library which you can pull up your own saved vectors or some from the sample library or if you want to import something from another CAD package you can also use the vector import option. Inside of here I'm going to select a DXF file of a banner. Now this particular DXF file comes from the vector art 2D clip art collection but obviously your vector could come from anywhere. I'm going to then make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to use my transform tools and I'm going to change the width of this vector to 28. Go ahead and apply and close. I'm then going to hold the Alt key down and I'm, I'm going to move it up to position at the top of the sign. Next I'm going to create some text. So I'm going to use my text tool with a calligraphy text and this one's just a text or a font that gets pulled up from my fonts folder. Um, Express will pick up any fonts that you have installed on your computer. I'm going to start by setting the sizing to 2 and I'm going to type the words the. Once I've got those, I'm just going to move them into position in the top left side of the banner. I'm going to open the text tool again. I'm going to make the text a little bit larger and I'm going to come in here and create another text block. I'm going to call this watering. And the last text block here for this portion of the sign, I'm going to make 2 and I'm going to type out whole and I'm going to position that kind of bottom right of the sign. I'm also going to create a date. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller, come in here and I'm going to do established 1945. Now this I'm going to center using my alignment tools. I'm going to center it horizontally and that's going to kind of position it where I want it on the sign. Now for the watering text, I'm going to use the wrap on a curve to kind of position it on the banner. So I'm going to select the banner, I'm going to use the wrap text on a curve, and I'm going to start to position it around where I want it to be placed. Now I'm going to move it to the other side so that we can kind of position on the inside of the banner, and I'm also going to move it up a little bit. Each letter can be manipulated by using the Alt key. So once you're happy with the positioning, you can go ahead and say OK. Now something else that you might notice about my text is I have a couple letters that are appearing red. Usually what this means is that there's a problem with my vectors. If I go ahead and select the vectors and open up my vector doctor tool, it's going to help me analyze the vectors and diagnose any problems. So if I click the identify button, it's going to look for problem areas. In particular, I'm more concerned with vector loops and intersections than I am with coincident points. So I'm going to clear the markers and I'm going to uncheck the coincident points and I'm just going to look for vector loops. Now if I zoom into the letter G, you should hopefully see that I do in fact have a loop here. That's why it's identifying this area. To remove that, I'm just going to use the fix problems. I'm going to clear the markers and I'm going to re-identify. Everything looks good, so I'm now just going to start to group these together. And this is just going to make it easier to select these items when I'm ready for machining. 
Now that we've got the text and the banner and everything's created here, we're now going to move on and put some 3D reliefs onto the sign. So underneath Relief Tools, I'm going to open up the Clip Art Library. As already mentioned, this comes with over 400 reliefs that you can add to your designs. So inside of here, I'm going to look and navigate to a section called Objects. Inside of the Objects section, I'm going to find some different parts that I can use for my sign. In particular, I'm going to select this wine bottle because it kind of fits with my theme. I'm going to size it up, so I'm going to change the height to be 12 and click Apply, and I'm going to move it into position where I want it on the sign. I'm also going to change the scaling on this to 0.4, so you can adjust the sizing, the scaling, everything can be linked together. You can either add or subtract it, so I'm going to paste it in and close, and this is going to add in that 3D wine bottle to my sign. Now in order to see where this is, I'm just going to turn this preview on and this just gives me an idea of where the 3D is in the 2D. I'm going to select another option from my objects library, so I'm just going to navigate down to that section. This time I'm going to select a wine glass. I'm going to size it up, let's change it to 6, click apply and move it into position. Now if I'm not sure what the position is, I can always come up to the ruler bar here and drag down a guideline and use that to kind of help me position my part. Once I'm happy with that, I change the scaling to be 0.4 to match the other one and paste and close. Now I've got the 3D parts added into my sign. I'm going to get rid of this guideline. Now that we've got those in, I'm just going to add a little bit more detail, so a little bit more of a design. So I'm going to come in here and just draw a couple polyline with some points. I'm going to then select these points and use the S key on my keyboard to smooth them out. And I'm going to kind of pull them around as if they're a wave. With that selected, I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to make copies and kind of move it around a little bit. This can then be selected and it can be mirrored over for the right side. And I can hold the Alt key to keep it aligned and pull it into position. Now I've got all of the components that I need to get ready to machine the part. So I'm going to move, going to move over to the toolpath section and the first toolpath I'm going to set up is the area clearance. I'm going to grab the outer border, the banner and the outlines that were brought in with the two relief files. I'm going to set the finish depth to 0.4. From my tool paths, from my tool database, I'm going to select a half inch end mill from the roughing and finishing section. And I'm going to calculate now. If we go ahead and take a look in the 3D view, we should be able to see that the tool path goes between the borders that we've selected. I can then simulate to check my results and move on to the next tool path. In order to select the vectors for the next tool path a little bit easier, I'm going to turn off that preview. I'm going to select the the, the whole, and the established. We're going to bring up the V carving strategy for this. Now because I've already machined away this area, I'm going to set this to be 0.4. And I'm going to pick a carving tool. In this particular case, I'm going to set up a 90 degree tool, center line, calculate now. We can then simulate this one. Next we're ready to actually machine the 3D parts. So I'm going to select the vectors for the 3D. I'm going to bring up underneath 3D tool paths. I'm going to use selected vector, pick up a tool. This one we're going to use the eighth inch ball nose. And I'm going to go to the 3D view and calculate now. Can then go ahead and simulate that to see the results. Next we're going to do that detail, so that wavy texture. So I'm going to select the vectors for that. And we're going to use a machine along a vector with a finish depth of 0.45. And we're going to start at 0.4 because remember we've already cut away this material. I'm going to pick up a quarter inch ball nose tool. Select that and calculate now. And we can simulate that tool path. Last thing we'll do is select our profile and we're going to do a cutout pass using one of our Roman OG bit, so a little bit of our more decorative bit. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to adjust the step down on this to 0.25. Calculate now and close. We can simulate that one so we can see our finished sign. 
Now if you want to preview this and get a better idea of how this would look actually rendered out of a piece of material, underneath our shading we can change our option here and choose from one of our wood shading rendering options and this will show us a little bit more of a better representation of how our part will look.